Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. Can you solve this problem from a national exam in Malaysia? A cylindrical container with length 20 centimeters is placed on the floor against the wall as shown in the diagram. Point Q is on the edge of the base and Q is two centimeters from the wall and one centimeter from the floor. Can the cylindrical container fit inside a box whose dimensions are 21 centimeters by 7 centimeters by 7 centimeters? Why or why not? Now there's an unstated assumption that the wall is perpendicular to the floor. This is something most of us would assume, but it's not necessarily true. There are walls and floors that are not perpendicular. But go ahead and assume the wall is perpendicular and that this is a perfect right cylinder. Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. So how can we figure out if the cylindrical container can fit inside a box with these dimensions? We need to check if the cylinder's dimensions are smaller than the box's dimensions. We know one dimension of the cylinder is 20 centimeters, and that is smaller than the box's dimension of 21 centimeters. So that dimension will fit inside the box. The other dimensions of the cylinder are equal to the diameter of the circle. This will be the width and the height which will be equal to the circle's diameter. The question is, is the circle's diameter smaller than seven centimeters or larger than seven centimeters? How can we figure it out? The only piece of information we're given is that Q is two centimeters from the wall and one centimeter from the floor. So we can try and numerically estimate what the circle's dimensions need to be. We'll plot out the floor on the x-axis and the wall on the y-axis. We'll use a little bit of graph paper and we'll draw a diagram that's two scales so that we can make a numerical estimate. Point Q is two units from the wall and one unit from the floor. So we'll mark this point as a negative 2, 1 because it's two units left of the wall and one unit above the floor. So what kind of circle would touch both the floor and the wall and pass through point Q? Well, let's try and numerically estimate this. Here's a circle that contains Q. It touches the wall and the floor, but it's not exactly passing through Q. And here's a circle that's touching the wall and the floor that's too big. So let's use a computer simulation to imagine growing the blue circle and shrinking the green circle to get exactly what kind of circle we would need that passes through Q and touches both the floor and the wall. It turns out there is a unique circle with this property. We can now measure the circle's dimensions by counting the units on this plot. The width will be equal to 10 units or 10 centimeters and the height will be also 10 centimeters. So if all we cared about was solving this problem numerically, we've figured it out. The circle is not smaller than seven centimeters in its diameter. The circle is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So the circle's width and height are too large for the box that has dimensions of seven centimeters by seven centimeters. So in one way, we found the answer. But for a mathematician, this may be unsatisfying. While we have found a method to numerically estimate the diameter, how can we solve for the exact value? Furthermore, we solve for a specific value of Q, but what if Q was a different value? By what method could we solve the problem quickly for other values of Q? It wouldn't be cumbersome to keep on trying to do the simulation for every single value of Q, but we might be able to come up with a formula so that we can instantly figure out what the dimensions of the circle would be for any value of Q. So how can we approach the problem and solve this more generally? 
We'll use the same approach. We'll have the floor on the x-axis and the wall on the y-axis. We have a circle that's passing through point Q, which will be negative 2, 1. There's one more thing we know about the circle. It's tangent to the floor and the wall. So we can draw a square as such, and each of these dimensions will be one radius of the circle. So one radius left of the wall will be negative r, and one radius above the floor will be positive r. This will be the circle's center at negative r, comma r. We want to find a circle centered at the point negative r, comma r that passes through the point q, which equals negative 2, 1. A circle that is centered at negative r, r and has a radius of r has the equation the quantity x plus r squared plus the quantity y minus r squared equals r squared. We want this circle to pass through the point q, which equals negative 2, 1. So we'll substitute the value x equals negative 2 and y equals 1 into the above equation. This gives the quadratic equation the quantity negative 2 plus r squared plus the quantity 1 minus r squared equals r squared. We now have an equation in a single variable r. We can expand out each of these binomials and then collect like terms to one side to get the following quadratic equation. r squared minus 6r plus 5 equals 0. This can be factored into the quantity r minus 5 and the quantity r minus 1. We have two solutions, r equals 5 or r equals 1. Let's check the solution r equals 1. In that case, the point Q would not be in the corner between the wall and the floor, it would actually be on the other side of the circle. So this does not correspond to our original diagram and the problem that we're trying to solve. So we reject the solution r equals 1. This means r is equal to 5, and the diameter of the circle is 2 times r, which equals 10 centimeters, just as before. So once again, we figured out the circle's diameter is larger than 7 centimeters. But we figured out an exact value. And we can take this method and generalize it to solve for any value of q, where q is equal to negative ab. We use the same general equation for a circle that's centered at negative rr and has a radius of r. We then need this circle to pass through the point q equals negative ab, so we substitute x equals negative a and y equals b, and we end up with the following equation. Once again, we can expand each term and then collect like terms. We end up with the following quadratic equation, and we can then use the quadratic formula to get that the answers would be r is equal to a plus b plus or minus the square root of 2ab. We would then check if either solution satisfies the original constraints of the problem, and that would give us the value for r. Did you figure out this problem? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions. If you like this video, you can check out my books, which are listed in the video description. You can also support me on Patreon. You can also catch me on social media, either at Mind Your Decisions or at Presh Talwalker, depending on the site.